بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of purification of the soul. In the previous episodes, we've spoken about purification, and we said that it involves a number of stages. What are the two stages, uh, Brother Muhammad, that purification of the soul involves? Uh, the first is, I think, removing, removing any bad characteristics present in a person, uh -huh. and replacing it with good characteristics. Exactly. A prime example is if a person has maybe dishonesty in him, and he likes to lie, or he, even if he doesn't like to, he just does it unintentionally, and he replaces that with honesty. Exactly. Brilliant. So. And uh, Brother Gulraz, you can tell me about how does this link to the word tazkiya in the Arabic language. The word tazkiya has a number of meanings. Um, tazkiya means to purify. To remove, yeah, to and remove, clean. To purify and to increase. Mm -hmm. So I guess it would be to purify the bad characteristics. Yes. And to increase the good ones. Yes, excellent. And that is the definition of tazkiya to nufus, that you cleanse or cleans uh, the souls from evil and bad characteristics, and then secondly, increase the soul with good characteristics. Let's look now at some of the bad qualities of the heart and soul, and then see the causes of these diseases as well as their evils. And then we'll go on to look at some of the ways we can cure these diseases and remove them from our souls. Now the first disease that I'd like to look at is the disease which is known in Arabic as ghadab. ghadab. Who can tell me what ghadab means uh, in English? Well, anger, uh, um, I think it's uh, doing um, bad things. Ghadab. Ghadab. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. I, anger? I know. Yes, uh, like uh, treating people in uh, bad ways. Mm. Um, it's something from inside. Yes, so anger in the Arabic language comes from the word ghadab in, yes. in, 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 in Arabic. And nobody is free from anger. Uh, nobody is free from anger. Did you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry? Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets angry in the Quran. Uh, we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He says, whoever disbelieves in Allah after his, after his belief, except for him who is forced into it and whose heart is at ease with faith. But those who open their breasts to disbelief, upon them is the anger from Allah and theirs will be a great torment. So this shows, this ayah shows very clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has anger. But on what types of people, which types of people uh, Muhammad does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala get angry with? Upon those who have uh, disbelieved. Exactly, as the ayah says very clearly, upon those who have disbelieved. And in fact, uh, in fact, the uh, anger of Allah extends further to certain types of Muslims as well. Who are those, Baha? Well, uh, who don't pray, I think Those so. who don't pray, those yeah. who disobey Allah and His uh, Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Likewise, in the same way, the prophets would get angry. Some of the prophets uh, of Allah would get angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمَّا رَجَعَ مُوسَىٰ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ غَضْبَانَ أَسِفَىٰ And when Musa returned to his people, angry and grieved. And so this shows very clearly that anger is a quality of good people as well, including some of the greatest messengers of Allah, uh, such as Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So anger per se is not something censurable, and it's not considered a disease. But there are certain types of anger that are sinful, and there are certain actions that a person does when he's angry, that are blameworthy. And what is the key thing in uh, blameworthy anger? And that is excessive anger. It causes a person to lose his ability to think straight. It can overtake a person's intellect. It can overtake his religion. Sometimes a person doesn't even know what he's saying or what he's doing in this state. And this anger, he may lead out to lash out something with his tongue to, uh, to give verbal abuse to someone and this kind of thing. Yeah. Let's have a look at some examples of where anger a person has done something in the state of anger, uh, but yet uh, he's regretted what he's done afterwards. Brother yeah, Muhammad. I was just going to say that, you know, one of the best examples that I've got is, uh, it's even happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to a lot of my friends and other youth, that when we, you know, play, play sports or something like this, maybe football or something like that, we don't like the rule or a decision that, that the referee made, <laughs> or that maybe one of our friends did, we don't yeah. like what he did. So we will, you know, probably get a bit agitated, a bit angry. Saying some words that's, uh, sorry for inter interrupting, yeah. but saying, so, saying some words that's uh, bad words and uh, being uh, rude sometimes. Yeah, I think yeah. so. exactly. And, and these are the consequences, yeah. some of the consequences 
of anger. We'll touch back on that point uh, in a few minutes, inshallah. Uh, one instance of excessive anger, it can destroy the relationship between two families, between a husband and wife, between brother and brother, uh, between countries even, uh, and it can even cause wars between people. Um, it can also, uh, if it accompanies a person throughout his life, then people will avoid him. And in the same way, he, will, he may lose his job, yes. he may lose his family, he may end up getting divorced, uh, he may lose his children out of custody or anything like this. So some of the scholars of the past, they said that beware of anger, because it leads you to the embarrassment of having to apologize. And this is the point that you made yeah. earlier on. Um, and this is very true. I mean, how many times have we seen people who have acted in anger, and then they've had to go through the embarrassment of having to apologize uh, for their rash behavior. Let's come back to the earlier point. Um, I'm sure we've all got examples where somebody's acted uh, in a rash manner uh, in a state of anger. Gulraz, you have anything? Um, yes, I guess uh, one of the most famous, most pop, um, famous examples are that of road rage. Mm. Like many people when they're driving, you know, there may be calm people outside of the cars, but as soon as they get in the cars, when they're driving. They're in, they're in the comfort of their cars. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they're in, within the, the, if you like, the walls of the car. Yeah. So then, for example, if somebody you know, suddenly pushes into them, pushes in and, you know, in front of them, then that enrages him and, you know, starts horning and comes out and... Smashes and the window. Smashes the window, <laughs> attacks the person, whatever. Exactly. We'll, we'll come back to some of the solutions in the next episode, inshallah, and we'll have a look at these... Uh, examples. Yes, brother, you have another example, Baha. Well, I think uh, I had a friend of mine uh, who owns a cafe. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes when you have a partner and you don't know how to deal with your partner, so that's what actually happened, and they uh, broke up, like uh, doing some bad things uh, in an angry manner. You know, mm -hmm. so. That's, uh, so what did it lead to, Yanni? Uh, they closed the cafe. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so they that's lost quite money. Bad. Yeah. And they lost money. Mm. So, so that's one very common example. Yeah. In fact, I was reading in the paper about how two very close friends, yeah. one of them actually ended up killing another yes. because of anger. And this is yeah. how evil, uh, excessive anger can be. The pro uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet uh, a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he asked him for counsel or advice. And what did the Prophet ﷺ reply? He said, لا تغضب. Don't get angry. Uh, don't get angry. And likewise, Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu asked the Prophet ﷺ, he asked him for something that would save him from the anger of Allah, from the wrath of Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ replied again, لا تغضب. Don't get angry. And some scholars have uh, commented on the words of the Prophet ﷺ, لا تغضب. Don't get angry. And said that he was not actually commanding a person to rid himself of anger itself but rather to keep control over it. Uh, and we can see this very clearly, because it's very difficult sometimes for a person to remove his own emotion, or his own natural uh, state, if you like. Um, and it's, there's always occasions where we get upset, and we get angry, we get irritated. Mm -hmm. But Islam always comes when there are diseases in a person, or where there are natural diseases, if you like, then Islam comes and tells us to cure uh, by, by controlling the disease, as opposed to just simply removing that disease. And we can see that in many instances. For example, Allah says in the Qur'an, زُيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ حُبُّ الشَّهَوَاتِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ That for mankind, uh, for man it has been uh, beautified in them, the love of desires from women. So Allah is telling us that it's a natural thing, it's a natural thing for a man to uh, look at a woman and feel, yani, feel some kind of uh, attraction there. But at the same time, Islam comes, he do, Islam comes and doesn't say, remove this, uh, this quality or this attraction. Islam comes and says, control it through marriage, through marriage, through lowering our gazes when we're looking at non-mahram women and so on and so forth. Um, in the same way, anger, Islam doesn't come and say, totally remove your anger. But it comes and says, you need to control uh, that anger. And we can see this clearly in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Radiallahu anhu, who said that the Prophet said, if anyone suppresses his anger when he's in a position to give vent to it, then Allah Ta'ala will give, will call him on the day of resurrection over the heads of all creatures and will ask him to choose any of the bright and large eyed maidens that he wishes. So this is a very clear 
uh, example of where one is supposed to, he has the opportunity to vent it, but he doesn't. Likewise, the Prophet ﷺ said, the strong one is not the one who overcomes the people by his strength, but the strong one is the one who controls himself uh, while in a state of anger. So we're not commanded to remove the quality of anger from ourselves, but we should act in a way to avoid the potential bad consequences of anger. And it's natural for most people to get angry when something annoys them. Uh, but we, shouldn't, we should restrain our anger and keep it under our control uh, so that it never leads us to do something which is forbidden in Islam. Uh, we'll take this on further after the break, insha'Allah. Uh, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.